Hello and welcome back to another Giant Slayer TFT Top 10 video. Today we'll be talking about 10 tips for the latest patch 1118. There's always little things a player can do to improve, especially in a game like TFT that's always evolving. As we're several weeks into the mid-set, this is a good time to provide a few tips to help players looking to improve. We've got a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and dive on in. But before we begin, please don't forget to click the links in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video happen. We host many TFT tournaments with plenty of exciting content to come. Be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social media pages. All right, let's get back to the video. Starting off, we have our first tip coming in at number 10, hotkeys. Let's first preface this. We're specifically talking about the desktop version of TFT, not the mobile version, as hotkeys don't apply there. For the desktop version, there's tons of ways you can optimize your gameplay by utilizing various hotkeys present in the game, both related to TFT and built into the client itself. Oddly enough, hotkeys aren't talked about all that often, even though they can be quite useful. We'll also say that you by no means have to play with any of the hotkeys at all, as personal preference does take precedence. But if you're looking for a way to improve, hotkeys are one way to do that. There are multiple hotkeys present in TFT. Rolling, leveling, camera changing, and placing units onto the board from your bench, and vice versa. Main reason you use any of these hotkeys is efficiency. A player using hotkeys is going to be quicker than someone clicking and thus more efficient with their use of time. This is actually quite important in TFT because it's related to decision making. If you're efficient with your time, you can make more decisions such as when rolling down at level 7 or positioning your board while scouting. Becoming proficient with hotkey usage cuts down on the time it takes to perform actions based on your decisions. We don't recommend instantly diving into using every single hotkey if you're new to them, simply try focusing on one or two at a time. Make sure you look up what hotkeys are by default to determine if you want to change them. The only hotkey we recommend changing is the deploy to battlefield slash return to bench hotkey under the TFT menu in game. Having two hotkeys that are set up next to each other allows a player to quickly swap units to the bench and instantly redeploy them. If you've ever seen a high ELO player swap units from left to right quickly, this is how. All in all, it's up to each player to decide what works best for them. Maybe you're faster clicking to roll but are slower when scouting, so focusing on camera hotkeys is better. Or a player accidentally hits the wrong key when leveling, so they want to change it to something further away from the others. All we can recommend is giving the hotkeys a try to see if it helps you improve. Let's move on to the number 9 tip, which is that the sentinel trait is now based around items and not health. This is a fairly self-explanatory tip, but one worth mentioning in case players returning to the midset are unaware of the change. Or for anyone that isn't familiar with how this synergy, Sentinel, applies to the initial shield and attack speed buff. Previously, this buff was based on the Sentinel champion with the highest health. This led to some wonky balancing like taking off a sizable chunk of health from Lucian and over buffing Galio. Now it applies at the start of combat to the Sentinel champion with the most items with the tiebreaker being the highest attack speed. This way you can itemize both Lucian and Galio with normal items and still have the initial boost of power on your Lucian or whichever Sentinel you want buffed initially. Again, this shouldn't be news to many players, but not everyone keeps up to date with the ever-changing balance changes of TFT. Continuing down the list, our next tip coming in at number 8 is to use Teemo as a counter to AD comps. The mid-set for set 5 has leaned heavily towards AD compositions. Whether that's Aphelio, Sakshan, Jax, Tristana, or any other AD champion, they are far more prevalent than most AP carries. As such, knowing how to properly counter and play against those types of boards will help you squeak out an extra round win here or there. Commonly, this is done with Ironclad and other armor-heavy frontlines like Rel with Redeemed. While effective, and you should continue to use those types of traits and champions, one of the best counters is actually Teemo. Of course, Teemo isn't always a reliable counter because, for one, buying Teemo costs health. That means any player on low health, generally below 40, buying even one Teemo is a bit too costly. Another issue is that Teemo's ability is random. There's no guarantee the mushrooms will land on the enemy AD carry. While those are definitely downsides, all in all, Teemo is still insanely good against AD carries due to the attack speed slow of his ability. It's a 50% reduction, which is a lot, and dampens the effectiveness of AD champs quite heavily. Next time you're in a lobby with a majority of AD compositions and you have the opportunity to run Teemo, we recommend doing so. With another Hellion, you'll also get the bonus of potentially winning more often with Cruel as well. Moving on, our next tip is about using positioning to manipulate the enemy board, which comes in at number 7. To begin with, let's explain what we mean by manipulating the enemy board. There's quite a few ways that we've seen this, but the most common that we've seen in set 5 is backlining most of your board so that the enemy champions move forward at the start. This was mainly popular during the Tristana meta, but the idea still has uses even without Tristana. 
Keep in mind this isn't going to be useful for assassins and maybe difficult to do with cavaliers since their movement patterns happen at the same time as the enemy would be moving forward. For the most part, this applies to Tristana, but also units like Akshan. Akshan wants to swing into the enemy backline and manipulating the enemy carry to move forward puts Akshan in a better position to kill them. This can also help in playing against assassins or front lines you may need to move out of position. There's a lot of applications to do this, so mess around with it and see how best you can maneuver the enemy champions to best suit your comp. With that, we can move on to the number six tip, don't oversell your board when rolling. We know it's tempting to just sell off your current board when rolling at level seven or eight. There's so many high cost champions worth playing in the meta that it seems like replacing your entire board with those champions will improve your board drastically. In reality, it doesn't. The reason is that when overselling your board, you're often losing out on a lot of effective health and damage you gain from upgrading those champions. Of course, it's possible to get quite lucky and be able to instantly pivot your entire board, but in most cases, it's better to do it slowly. Take out the weaker champs or traits that aren't helping your board and replace them. Try to keep the majority of your board as upgraded units. Doing so will help reduce the damage taken in the following rounds while you continue to pivot your board. Another tip we have related to board strength is to use radiant items to shore up any weaknesses your board has, which comes in as our number five tip. Radiant items have been an amazing addition to the game and bring lots of power to the mid game boards. But a lot of players tend to default their selection towards carry items or one or two utility items that are universally known to be good like shroud or banshees. This is fine to do, but radiant items make it possible to fill any gaps your board may have in items. For example, you may have multiple carry items going into 3-6. Instead of grabbing another, it's potentially better to go for a defensive frontline item. Or if you have a good mix of defense and offensive items, then aim for utility. Maybe you just hit a Karma or Vel'Koz and have no AP items. This is such a good opportunity to make the pivot with a Radiant AP item. We know the items you get are random and you only have five choices, but spending extra time thinking about what your board needs before making a decision will help improve your mid game. Up next, we have the number four tip, which is that the frontline is often more important than the backline. We can preface this by saying yes, having a good carry is still essential, but a good carry without a solid frontline means almost nothing as there won't be time for the carry to, well, carry. Learning what the meta is in regards to the frontline and playing around those champions will help a lot during every stage of the game, particularly early game where a good frontline is going to win you more rounds than an upgraded carry. That said, TFT is not a static game, so there may be times where you need a carry more than a frontline. The point of this tip is to get players thinking about their frontline more often instead of worrying about hitting the perfect carry. There are plenty of viable carries, whereas frontlines tend to skew either towards revenants or knights with a few other synergies like ironclad or even the occasional abomination thrown in. While we're not suggesting you ignore buying a carry champion, we're mainly suggesting you focus on both carries and frontline with more emphasis on the frontline. With that, we can move into our top three. The tip coming in at number three is to learn what champions are the best item holders. This doesn't mean item carries, but specifically item holders, meaning champions you use throughout the game as stand-ins for your eventual carry. This can be in the early, mid, or even the late game, it just depends on what items you have and what you're playing for. Fully understanding the intricacies of the meta is a bit out of the scope of what we're talking about here, we're speaking more in broad strokes for the current meta. Knowing which champions have a higher impact with items will help improve each stage of the game. For example, Kale has become a viable late game champion. There are quite a few champions that can hold items for her, but knowing which are the best will make the pivot into Kale a lot smoother later on. Learning this does require a few things. First off, playing the game. If you want to improve, you need to play, and playing will show you what's working and not. Second, streams. High ranked streamers are an invaluable source of information on the current meta as they often play the game more than others and have a lot of knowledge. Lastly, looking up match histories can give a small idea of what comps are doing well, which gives insight into which synergies and champions you may want to consider. Overall, there's a lot of ways to go about gaining this information, but seeking it out is the first step. Next up, we have the number two tip, which is the early game has a large impact on the end of the game. What this tip boils down to is focusing more on the earlier stages of the game and improving there, more so than worrying about the best late game comp to run. Looking up a build and seeing what's doing well in the meta can be useful, but it's not going to help you in the early rounds where you want to be saving as much health as possible and building a good economy. Specifically, we're focusing on stages two and three, where doing well in those two stages can directly correlate to where you finish at the end of the game. Things like our previous tip with learning item holders or focusing on your frontline. 
Focusing on improving all of those early game aspects is going to vastly improve your overall game. If you've ever wondered how players at the top of the ladder can be so consistent, it's because they can consistently play the early stages of the game very well. And now for the number one tip, watch tournaments. The tournament scene in TFT is fantastic with a lot of highly competitive players from multiple regions giving it their all to do well in tournaments. As we're nearing the end of set five, that means the larger tournaments are being played like the recently concluded North American regionals. Watching these tournaments is a great way to gain overall knowledge on the game, even though the metas of these tournaments are often isolated. By that we mean you're not going to see a lot of those play styles on the regular ladder as the competitive level is much higher and the tournaments often form their own meta. So even if the meta itself may not apply to your general ladder games, the way those games are being played will. Things like positioning, pivots, how they play the early game, and what items are doing well. The list goes on and on. As such, we definitely recommend watching a tournament when you have the ability to do so, or at least the VOD, as chances are you'll gain quite a lot of insight into improving at TFT. That's going to be it for today's video, folks. There's always ways to improve a game like TFT, and even seemingly minor tips can have a big impact, so we hope these tips will be useful in helping you climb higher on the ladder. Let us know in the comment section below if you have any extra tips to provide. Thank you for watching, and if you're enjoying our content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future Giant Slayer TFT videos.